Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This week's video we're doing lap joints using MIG. Last video we did outside corner joints using MIG, so it's time for lap joints now. We're going to cover all of them here in the, in the coming weeks. And this week we're doing laps in 11 gauge, which is about an eighth of an inch thick, also about three millimeters thick. And the wire feed speed set on this joint here is just a tad low. It's doing a pretty good job. It's definitely very controllable, but it's a little low and therefore makes it rattly and noisy a little bit. So I cranked it up a little bit along with the voltage. A little bit hotter puddle and a little bit smoother arc. And that's what we're going to roll with. It's about 18 volts and roughly uh, 210 inches of wire feed speed. And that worked pretty good. It was a pretty good compromise between being, uh, you know, hot enough but not too hot that I couldn't go nice and slow and film it and everything. So 11 gauge is, is uh, plenty thin enough to not worry about penetrating when you're going downhill. There's always a risk of cold lap with MIG but downhill on 11 gauge usually not a problem as long as you stay in front of the puddle have it set about where I've got it keep a good short stick out and uh, you know stay in the front of the puddle and let that arc bite in don't get behind the puddle and just let the puddle wash over now the same technique works for both horizontal and downhill and, and I'll show you that here this is actually a downhill well I just flipped it around and using the software and it looks just like about the same thing you would do horizontal. Now speaking of horizontal, uh, I'm going to use these rolled pieces up here to do some horizontal lap joints. That flips the, uh, the corner down to the bottom just to mix things up a bit. And I use the same little technique but I'm trying to really watch that bottom corner and not roll it over too much. If I melt too much of that corner into the weld it just adds to the, uh, adds to the amount of weld and sometimes it'll just roll over and uh, just be kind of ugly. So I'll just try to use that for a boundary and just nip it. Got one on the outside and one on the inside here. And the tough thing about doing round stuff like this is you have to reposition your hands and, and keep the gun angle the same because it changes rapidly on you. So if you just try to do it like you're doing uh, flat metal, uh, you can get out of scope a little bit. You gotta constantly be moving around trying to keep a, a favorable gun angle on anything round. But again, you can see I'm just using the same little series of cursive E's or overlapping loops, whatever you want to call it. That is my go to method. Alright, with those done, we're gonna shift gears and do something a little thinner here. This is something that anybody that's got a MIG welder will probably be asked to do one day and weld somebody's muffler or exhaust pipe on friend or brother-in-law or a friend of a friend or whatever so the 16 gauge I turned it down I adjusted the machine down to about 16 and a half volts and turned the wire feed speed down to about 170 inches a minute which read out at about 85 amps again using 030 wire 7525 argon CO2 same little series of loops I'm just trying to trying to tie that corner in and if it gets too hot I'll tie a little bit more of it in in the overlapping piece kind of melt it in the puddle to cool off the puddle a little bit but it's not doing too badly now, this is a kind of a got kind of a zinc coating on it it's not as heavy a coating as like a sure enough galvanized steel you can see some flaky stuff on the inside, so it's definitely got a little zinc coating on it. But it welded pretty good. It just looks a little brown on the outside when, when you're done. And again, you can see on smaller uh, pipe like this, you have to reposition your hands even more quickly uh, to, to keep your gun angle pretty good. All right, I forgot to show this to begin with, but you need a good ground when you're doing exhaust pipe like that. Exhaust pipe's usually nasty, and you got to grind off a, a bare spot on it to even get a decent ground. But this is a way to get a, a better ground than you can with just a clamp because you got like a hundred little contact points as opposed to a couple, and uh, you'll get a good ground that way. And here's a tip uh, for that little exhaust pipe. I, I noticed I had a hard time 
following the line because of the smoke boiling up and whatnot. So as your clear lens gets kind of uh, crudded up with a spatter from MIG, this Novus number no. two plastic polish seems to work a lot better than just Windex or something and removing removing that stuff and can really extend the life of your lenses. It's not so much the cost of the lenses, it's the fact that with these uh, auto darkening helmets, a lot of them are non-standard lenses and you don't always have an extra one laying around and uh, you don't, you know, Home Depot doesn't have them and, and with the kind with the radius on them and everything like that. So there's a random tip for you. All right, thanks again for watching and visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.